morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to read A Bedtime for Bear. I love these books. These are some of my favorite stories about this bear and this little mouse right here. I'll try to find the rest of the books I have and I'll read them to you before school's all done. So this is called A Bedtime for Bear. It's written by Bonnie Becker. She wrote the story. And it's illustrated by Katie McDonald Denton. Illustrated means what? It means that they draw the pictures and the author is responsible for writing the words. And this book is beautiful. It has beautiful drawings in it and the story is wonderful. So we look at the cover. The cover is the front. And this is the back. There's always a cute little picture of something that's happening in the in the story on the back of a book. And this is the spine. And this is a thicker spine. So you can see that there's words and letters on the side. And it says the title. And it says the illustrator and the author's name is also on the spine. So when you put it on the bookshelf, if you slide it in, you can look at the side of the book on the spine and find the story you're looking for. So... You'll figure, you'll see a lot of that when you go to kindergarten and you go to the library to actually take books out instead of the ones that you keep in your classroom like we do. So, the bedtime for Bear. Let's begin. I love this book. It's one of my favorites. I know. I say that all the time, but I love books. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to turn it so you can see. Everything had to be just right for Bear's bedtime. His glass of water had to sit in the exact right spot on his bed sand. His favorite pillow must be nicely fluffed. His nightcap needed to be snug. And most of all, it had to be quiet. Very, very quiet. And there's the door to Bear's bedroom, and it has a sign on the door that says, Do not disturb. Because when Bear sleeps, he likes it quiet. Can't say as I blame him. I wouldn't want to go to sleep with a noisy room. Look at this. There's Bear sitting in his chair. It says, one here, one evening, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. He opened the door, and there stood Mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. He clasped a tiny suitcase in his paw. There's Bear's house. I'm here to spend the night, exclaimed Mouse with a happy little wiggle of his whiskers. Surely we agreed on next Tuesday, protested Bear. No, said Mouse, you most definitely said tonight. Oh, said Bear. Bear had never had an overnight guest before. Guests could quite possibly mess things up and make noise, and Bear needed quiet, absolute quiet, at bedtime. Even so, Bear and Mouse enjoyed an evening of checkers and warm cocoa, and soon it was time for bed. Remember, I must have absolute quiet, reminded Bear. Oh, indeed, said Mouse. Bear set out his glass of water, adjusted his nightcap, fluffed his favorite pillow, and climbed into bed, and it was very, very quiet. He closed his eyes. Bristle, bristle, bristle. Bear heard a noise. It was Mouse brushing his teeth. <clears throat> Bear cleared his throat in a reminding sort of way. Most sorry, said Mouse, and Bear closed his eyes again. <laughs> Mouse hummed while he put on his nightshirt. <laughs> Absolute quiet, muttered Bear most patiently. Deepest apologies, said Mouse. Crack, crack, squeak, quack. Went Mouse's bed as he hopped in. Bear jammed his pillows over his ears and gritted his teeth and closed his eyes. He was just about ready to drift off to sleep when... Good night, Bear, Mouse 
called softly, and Bear tried to pretend that he was asleep. Good night, Mouse called a little bit louder. My ears are highly sensitive, cried Bear. Really? How interesting, said Mouse. See Mouse right there. Can you hear this? Mouse mumbled into his pillow. Yes! Amazing. How about this? Mouse said from underneath his pillow. Quiet! Mouse slipped under his blankets and craw crawled to the bottom of his bed and he whispered, Can you hear? Silence! roared the bear. How do you think that bear is feeling? You think he's mad? Because what's he want to do? He just wants to sleep and bear is, er, Mouse is making all kinds of noise. Mouse slid from his bed, went to the closet and said in the teeny tiniest voice possible in the furthest, farthest, darkest, teeniest possible corner of the closet. Surely you can't hear. See, there he is. There's Mouse in the tiny part of the closet. Will this torment never cease? Wailed Bear. Look how big the letters are. He's really, that the author is telling us with really big words that he's really, really upset. Sorry, Bear. Good night, whispered Mouse, and he tiptoed back into his bed as quiet as, well, you know. A mouse. <laughs> Bear fluffed his favorite pillow and adjusted his nightcap, and he waited. But there was no more sound from Mouse. It was at last quiet, very, very quiet. Bear heard a shuffling sound. Mouse, is that you? And there was no answer. And Bear heard a creak, creak, creak of the floorboards. I know it's you, he answered. He said, but no answer. You can't fool me, growled Bear. Bear, but he didn't sound very certain. And then Bear heard a low moaning noise. Mouse! And there was silence. Look at Bear. How do you think Bear feels in, in bed at night with the lights turned off? He looks a little scared. Bear was sure that something rustled on the floor. Mouse! He cried. Wake up! at mouse it's, he must have been sleeping look he jumped in his bed and when when bear made that noise mouse stumbled out of bed small and gray and sleepy eyed what is it but bear couldn't see any rustly moany sort of things in his room his room looked quite as it had always looked <laughs> Nothing, lied Bear, still clutching his blankie to his chin. I'm, I, I must have been talking in my sleep, Bear chuckled, but it was rather quaverly. Ah, said Mouse with a glance at Bear. Could I peek under your bed, asked Mouse. Sometimes I like to check for, well, you know, things. Well, if you must insist, said Bear, and there was nothing, said Mouse from underneath the bed. You'll want to check behind those curtains, I suppose, said Bear. All clear, declared Mouse a moment later. You better check the closet, offered Bear. You wouldn't want to be the least bit nervous. And Mouse came out of the closet, dusting his paws. Not a thing. Thank you, Bear. Oh, good night. Was it really the bear that was worried about noises? Or was it the mouse that was worried about the noises? Mm -mm. It was really the big bear, wasn't it? Wait! Said Bear. You'll probably want a bedtime story, I expect. For your nerves. For my nerves? Said Mouse. Oh, yeah, indeed. I'm quite shaken. Is it Mouse that feels shaken or is it the bear? And soon, let's see, that page stuck together. Oops. Then, with an eager flick of his tail, he settled onto Bear's favorite pillow. And Bear told him all about the adventures of the bear, brave, strong bear and the very frightened little mouse.
Yep, there they are, having a story together. And soon, Bear began to yawn, and Mouse yawned too. Good night, Bear, said Mouse. Oh, good night. A bear mumbled, and he heard, then you heard. And then, Bear began to snore loudly. But Mouse just smiled. And soon, Mouse and Bear were fast asleep. Shh. The end. Did you like that story about Mouse and Bear? About how at first Bear was having a trouble getting to sleep because that little mouse was making all kinds of noises. And then when Mouse finally settled down, Bear kept waiting for something else to happen and then he he heard things. But it was Mouse to the to the to save him. He went and looked behind the kit, the curtains and in the closet and underneath the bed and behind the curtains to look and see if there was anything other than a bear and a mouse in the room. And there wasn't. So, and that's it. That's the story. Did you like it? I hope you did. That's one of my favorites. That bear character and that little mouse. They have quite the relationship, let me tell you. So, until next time, I'll talk to you later, boys and girls. Bye.